We have uh, two young ladies that are going to be baptized today. And I think sometimes uh, people miss the real meaning of baptism. It has nothing to do with your salvation. It's a picture, a really, really wonderful picture of what's already happened to you. All right? Not only that, it puts you in this church. It gives you some responsibilities as being a part of this group of people, uh, which we're, we're very happy to have you. We really are. Uh, puts you in a big family. And like most big families, I guarantee you that we're going to have problems. We always do. <laughs> Uh, families have difficulties. Uh, but here in Romans, if you would read with me, Romans chapter 6, start with verse 1. It's a little bit of a lengthy reading. We'll read down through 14. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For as he that is dead is freed from sin, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Pray with me for just a moment. Father, as we approach your divine throne of grace this morning, Father, we're thankful for the privilege to be able to proclaim a portion of your word this morning. Ask Heavenly Father that your Holy Spirit would send it out, and it would accomplish what you would have it to accomplish. I ask for preaching grace this morning, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Pray, Heavenly Father, for a ready remembrance of your word as needed. Ask, Heavenly Father, that you forgive me for my sins and my shortcomings. And, Father, I'll be very, very careful to give Jesus the praise and the honor and glory for all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't really want to beat baptism to death here. I know maybe I've preached on it a couple of times. To get you to understand, uh, if folks forgive me, I've got a little bit of a dry mouth problem here. They wouldn't let me have... No, I'll, I'll let that. <laughs> you know what I was going to say, didn't you? <laughs> Baptism. Believers, when we're baptized, that's a picture of the death. We're buried, the burial, when we come up, the resurrection of Christ. It's, it's our death 
our death to sin, our burial, and our resurrection to a new life. That's it's what it is. It's a picture. All right? Beautiful, beautiful picture. It's a really great picture. Some people try to uh, add salvation to it, but you're saved by grace through faith. That's it. That's it. Just grace. It's not something that we can do. The word baptize, uh, the Greek word, if you want it, is baptizo, and it means to immerse, to dunk under. Uh, there's no place that you're going to find baptism and where they use, the Greek words aren't going to make any difference to you. Rantiso is sprinkling. It's not there. They're all baptizo. It's all dunk under. That's why we, that's why we do immersion. All right? Uh, submerge people. Take a look at, uh, at Matthew chapter 3 with me and start with verse 13. Beth told me she was going to cut the songs down this morning because we had a baptism. I got an hour and a half long message. I don't know why you... No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Matthew chapter 3 and start with verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, and who I am well pleased. Christ set the example himself. You understand? These words are baptizo, dunk under. He came up out of the water. All right? This is why we use this particular type or particular mode of baptism, if, if I can give you that. Uh, in Matthew 28, where Christ told us to go into all the world and baptize, same thing. We're to dunk under. Dunk under. Uh, the book of Acts is full of baptisms. They're all dunk under. Philip Eunuch was baptized. Dunked under. I just I want us to understand that why we do this particular type of baptism is because God's word commands it. Christ set the example. That's what we're doing. Okay? That's what we're doing. Uh we will have somebody up here. Uh, Penny gave me an extra five dollars to hold Shelly under for another. <laughs> no, she didn't. No, she didn't. I'm mean, Russ. Where do you see what Beth gives me when it's your turn? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Listen, you know what? This is baptism is a joy. It really is. It's our first step to doing, trying to do what the Lord wants us to do. It is. It's a joy. It's not something that we need to be afraid of. You know, it's not a... It, uh, baptism identifies us very openly with Christ. I want you to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 with me. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You know, when, when you're saved and you become a part of Christ, Christ becomes a part of you. Clean. Clean. I can't emphasize that enough. Clean. God sees us through Christ. 
he doesn't see my he doesn't see my anger he doesn't see my 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 sins my shortcomings he sees me through Christ all right clean he sees me righteous all right same way with all of you sees us clean uh, that's what Christ did for us on the cross uh, maybe it's kind of like a wedding you know when two people get married you're supposed to become one I think maybe baptism is a picture of the wedding ceremony perhaps where it's a picture of us becoming one with Christ you're already one when you get saved. This is just a picture. All right? It's just a picture. Uh, take a look at Romans 5 and 8. Uh, I don't fool with Facebook very much. But the other day I put on there that we were looking for sinners to come and be a part of this church. Sinners. People who know they're sinners. There's all kinds of religious organizations around this area that will take the goody two-shoe people. If the folks that don't think they do any wrong, the folks that... Uh, uh, out I heard an old saying one time, said they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Yeah. All right? If you're a sinner, you're welcome here. Yeah. All right? And by sinners, I mean those people, those of us who know we do things wrong. Yeah, yeah we do. We can still be saved by the grace of God and still mess up and still do things we shouldn't do. Try to be perfect. We're supposed to. Romans 5 and 8. I like this. It says, But God commanded His love toward us in that while we were yet perfect. Oh, come on. Follow along with me now. That's why I'm telling you where I'm at. While we were yet what? Sinners. sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He don't die for the goody two-shoe people. He dies for us. Sinners. Sinners. We need to, I think we need to get that down. Sinners. Second uh, Corinthians 5.17 tells us we're supposed to be new creatures. New creatures. Take a look with me. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That means you automatically quit smoking, drinking, thinking bad thoughts. No. Unfortunately not. I wish it was that easy. I really do. Uh, you know, I... I I haven't I haven't had a drink probably since 1972, maybe. But if I walk by a bottle of Jack, <laughs> still smells good, Kevin. Still smells good. I wish it didn't because I'm afraid of it. But it still smells good. And you fellows light a good cigar up. My mouth is water. Josh just told me about a new sin this morning. Chocolate covered coffee beans, right? Oh, man. I don't need any more sins, but... <laughs> I'm picking on Josh, all right? I'm picking on Josh. I'm just telling you, we are a new creature inside. Our soul is safe. Our soul is secure. We work on striving to be what God wants us to be. 
Okay. Again, just a picture. This is a picture. The old person buried, the new person raised back to life. Okay. One time. A commitment. Galatians 2 and 20. If you're following along with me. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I'm sorry, I'll wait. Galatians 2 and 20, if you want to turn. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live in the flesh. Uh, Is that right? All right. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I like that. I like that. Uh, We're not supposed to let sin have control. We're not supposed to let sin reign. We're not supposed to let sin have the best of us. Temptation is not a sin, folks. It really isn't. When we give in to it, yes. Temptation itself is not a sin. Not a sin. I lied to you, Beth. I'm almost done. See? <laughs> I want, I believe God wants us to understand. Baptism has nothing to do with your salvation, folks. You're going to go to heaven whether you're ever baptized or not. But baptism is something that the Lord tells us we should do. And I'm thankful for folks when they make up their, they make that choice. All right? When they make that choice. Uh, it's a picture. It's a, it's a very powerful one. I'm tickled that some of you folks come to watch Shelley. Be, if, if all of you will give me an extra 50 cents, I'll hold her under longer. I, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 hey, the scripture does say die for your sins. You want me to hold her? Look, I, if I didn't, I love to pick on people, folks. I'm giving her a hard time. I really am. You are part of it. If you come to this church, I'm going to pick on you. Okay, you can't, I can't help that. That's just. <laughs> so, somebody sat here. Oh, it was Joe last Sunday, wasn't it? Sat over here by himself, and I picked on him. He was in a bad spot there. All right. You folks that have already been baptized, we need to live like Christ wants us to live. If you haven't been baptized, then you need to think about it. You really need to think about it, pray about it, and seriously consider it's a picture. It's a picture. It's not something It's not something that's going to get you to heaven. You're already assured of that. Right? This is a picture. Okay? Just a picture. I'm going to ask Beth and... Where did Becky go, Kevin? Oh, she probably didn't think I was going to be finished here this quick, see? (laughs) Have a a closing prayer. Uh, The folks, you folks that would like to stay for the baptism, we'd love for you to stay. They they have a, a dinner afterwards. They've got a lot of good food back there. I've seen that. <laughs> Shelly asked me if she could do the closing prayer this morning before the baptism, and I said yes, she could. So Shelly's going to close us in prayer, okay? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your presence at this service. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that came to worship you here today, and bless the ones that we could not. Help us to apply Pastor Terry's message and do your will. Guide us and direct us in all we do, and may we stay in your presence throughout the week. Lord, if there be someone who does not know you, we ask, Lord, that you come into their hearts. Forgive us, Father, for all of our sins. Cleanse us and remold us to what you would have us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Folks, can we see if you want to sing, man? Amen. I that was going to be warm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh,
Oh. Yeah. Ethel, you can come closer. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in Him, by the authority vested in me by Freedom Missionary Baptist Church, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in Him, by the authority vested in me by Freedom Missionary Baptist Church, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yeah, there we go.